the automotive industry is undergoing rapid transformation and becoming a smart mobility ecosystem. At the foundation of this ecosystem is connectivity, which is basically the enabler for any type of value-added services that you can build on top of the connected car. Smart mobility unlocks a host of opportunities for both the OEMs as well as value-added service creators. At the same time, it brings with it a range of cybersecurity risks that never existed before. If you look back as near as five to 10 years ago at a typical vehicle, you could say it was air-gapped. Basically, it had protection from the outside world. There was no way a hacker could penetrate it unless they were physically near that vehicle. However, that all changes the second you introduce connectivity to that car. So if you were to ask an automotive uh, security officer whether they had a cybersecurity issue uh, with these unconnected cars, they would probably tell you we didn't have any issue or security risk was very low. Unfortunately, that all changes the second you introduce connectivity to these vehicles. Connectivity pretty much opens the doors for hackers to remotely penetrate a car and potentially uh, create damage uh, that can span multiple vehicles at the same time. Now let's look at how the connected car ecosystem looks like. So what we have here is a vehicle that has um, internet connectivity either through uh, an embedded SIM card or through an aftermarket dongle that provides mobile connectivity for, for this vehicle. Through this data connection, the car actually connects to the automotive cloud where, you, where a typical um, OEM or fleet operator would host a range of applications such as telematics, mobile application servers, LiDAR, maps, and ever-growing list. The last part of the infrastructure is the mobile phone, which consumers can use to unlock the doors, turn on the engines, and perform a variety of actions, such as um, driving the car remotely from, from the driveway. Now that we understand the infrastructure, let's look at how a hacker would try to penetrate all this connected vehicle service. The most obvious attack vector is what we call near-field attack, when a hacker can physically compromise the car either through OBD2, through Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi. Near-field attack in most cases are confined to the impact that they can create as they're isolated to a single vehicle. The more serious attack vectors are actually what we call remote attacks that are generated from the public internet from locations that are nowhere close to the vehicle. Hackers can remotely compromise the service either by attacking the automotive cloud and through it uh, being able to attack multiple connected vehicles at the same time. The third attack vector would be to go through the mobile app and then use it to pivot into the automotive cloud and from there into the connected vehicles and basically compromise the entire vehicle fleet. When we looked at the problem of how to secure a connected car, we had three goals in mind in building our solution. The first goal was that the solution had to be able to protect against remote attacks that are generated over the internet. The second goal was that we wanted to protect both the single vehicle as well as the entire vehicle fleet, expanding across multiple make models at the same time. And the third and final goal was that we wanted to be able to protect vehicles that are on the road today, not vehicles that are gonna leave the factory in two to five years time. So how do we go about solving this problem? What we realized was that the only way to address all three of these requirements is by using the cloud. In the cloud, what we're doing is we're leveraging data that is already being collected by the OEMs and connected vehicle fleets. The cloud also allows us to rapidly upgrade our software and make sure that we're always two steps ahead of the hackers without having to rely on the upgrade cycles of the existing vehicles. Once installed, our platform collects data from all three of these sources. We start with um, data coming off of the, the TCU from the connected vehicles. We add typically the telematic server that's hosted in the automotive cloud. And finally, we introduce the data coming off of the mobile application server. This is the point where the upstream cloud platform actually goes to work. What we do with all this data is we analyze it using advanced machine learning and big data analytics capabilities, and we model the, the entire connected car service. The platform understands what's the normal behavior of both the application servers, mobile, telematics, any additional service, as well as the behavior of any given car within the connected car service. Once we understand what the normal behavior is, we're now able to detect any violations, anything that's outside of the norm. We define what normal is, starting from the protocols that the automotive cloud uses, all the way up to the behavior of the, the app servers and the vehicles themselves. Once we define what the norm is, we're able to detect what is outside of the norm and use that information to create incidents. The incidents are then being consumed by the security operations center 
and the various security analysts uh, that operate that. At the end of the day, our product is being used by the SOC team, the various security analysts. It gives them a new visibility that they never had before and the ability to detect incidents in real time and perform triage and root cause analysis and actually get to the bottom of uh, things that are happening in the connected car service.